Welcome to another video. So this is a video about using sprint layout and I will use the final chess card as a reference. So the chess card is a C64 cartridge with a 5 MHz running CPU 6502 attached to the C64. Now this card isn't special to me in any way, I just wanted to help out a friend and also at the same time the world of Jenny websites, as you can see, has scanned images. And I will store these images and will import it in Sprint Layout. I didn't get to show you Sprint Layout of the uh, KU motherboard video series, so therefore I'm making this video. Here you can see that the, uh, uh, if you looked at the top there, you'll see that the image wasn't straight, so we need to straighten that up. So. So this is the board, 6502, some memory and some rooms and some glue logic, basically that's it. Yeah, so let's uh, get into um, yeah, so here you can see someone has done a um, CPLD version or SMD version. So, but as I said, I wasn't such... I'm not personally interested in this board. I just want something more easy to show you how to use Sprint Layout. So, And then most of the scenes will be for fast forward. So let's open... Uh, one of the images to be straightened. I use Photoshop CS5 in this case. You can use other software. And you use the ruler tool. You can find that with right click there. And then uh, find something that is supposed to be straight. Make a line. And then... Then you will see that we, we are 0.2 degrees off there so hit straighten should be fine so there you can see it's straight now uh, the second image needs to be flipped and um, need just need to find it first. There you go. So just press V, and this is uh, our Irfan view, I think I used, and just save it. So here we are in Sprint Layout. Make a new design. I need to change the board width. If I don't do that, I, I won't be able to see the end of the board. So, and the way I'm going to work with this is to. Um, I'm um, just going to save the project first, so we have it on file. We are going to use photocopies, scan copies, and then for the top we're going to use the component side, which we have straightened there, and we're going to focus on that. Now we can see it, so we have to click down there at the bottom to select what we are seeing. So S1 and C1 will show that image on the top. So C1 means copper one and S1 is silk one, basically. So let's just inspect, let's see. I've put on the grid here 1.27 millimeters and the holes here are 2.54 millimeters. So the pitch, um, I think, I forgot to set the correct uh, grid here, so yeah, so we'll just fix that. There, I fixed that. Okay, so now we're trying to align all these holes up to that grid. And I've fast forwarded it because it's a, a bit boring to watch, so basically what you do is tr just to try to get it, the holes to be the same as the grid, so. And then you use the L offset to pinpoint point the uh, background image. So 
So let's, this is the background image, which is flipped. And the reason for that is because we are working from a top-down view and the back, the board on the back is uh, x-rayed sort of. So, so let's try find the width of the boards. Just enter those on the left side there, uh, the inner and outer diameter. And then um, you hit pad and then you can click it. So here I wasn't happy with it, I think. So if we can, you can click the pad and on the right side, you can change the diameter. You can select a group of uh, items and change all of them in one go also. So, so yeah, so I like to, so you can see also here, which is very nice. And that is, uh, if you have everything on grid, usually those old boards, they were also using some sort of grid. So putting it in one fourth of the grid size uh, on this board worked out really well. Then I get, got everything on grid. Now the smaller the grid, the uh, harder it is to snap. To the correct place though so uh, it's not always that great really <laughs> so for the mounting holes uh, you place uh, pads but uh, I didn't show that I think basically you measure the dim dimension the diameter and just put the same diameter for inner and outer and you get the hole so, but these are the vias. So, same procedure as the uh, through holes. So, I got, forgot to say that when you work in Sprint Cloud and you make a through hole, you have to actually select a uh, plate through, I think, when you click that uh, pad button to the left there. So, or else you just get a pad, pad on top, which is a really strange. But yeah, sometimes you have only single-sided boards anyway, so that might might make sense. Here I looked up the... Um, um, it went a bit fast, but I figured out that I need to press space if I want to change the way the end of the trace um, mode is going to work. So, because you click to start trace and then when you move along, uh, you select how, what kind of bend you want on the end. So, but sometimes I just ignore it. I just click many times, and then you get the bend you want anyway. So, <laughs> but sometimes if you want a diagonal line, you have to press space though to change the way, way it works. So I'm not uh, doing the uh, edge connector yet <clears throat> because it has a different alignment than the. Um, the uh, grid, so I just put uh, all the wires out there. So now I'm doing the 0.4 uh, traces. I did the 0.63 something first, which is just power. And uh, as you can see, I've speed this up to eight times, and it's uh, pretty fast. And, uh, yeah, because it's like watching paint dry, so... <laughs> anyway, if you're still watching along, I just want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. But there will be another video, so I can wish you Happy New Year also before the New Year's Eve anyway. So I think I will be ready somewhere between Wednesday and Friday with the next video. So that will be the last KU Motherboard we do part three. So one thing that is difficult here is that when one of these traces goes from a via or through hole down to the trace and it's only like a millimeter long, it's not so easy to see because the reason that you see the lines here is because they are green. But now I hit exclusive now there at the bottom. 
and then you can see what it looks like without any drawings on top. So I have to do that often to see uh, all the traces that are don't that are not green anymore because when a trace comes into the true hole the uh, silk screen is removed so therefore it's not so easy to see those uh, connections so there's like small taps that goes from the trace and down into the some of the true holes there so but uh, Johnny has um, put out a version of this image that is uh, backlit and therefore those uh, uh, traces are very easily recognized anyway so I didn't show that in the video but uh, what I did is I did replace this image with the backlit image and then they sh those uh, tiny traces show up very easily so that's something I should have done with the C64 also that would be great but it was limited what to what I could do at work when I scan the images anyway so so yeah I forgot to say this but now I am on C2 or copper layer 2 which is the bottom side I'm just finishing up here and uh, taking a little there you can see the photo view which is nice you can see what it's supposed to look like and very soon I will start putting pads in. Now I'm putting pads. If you look closely, you will see that I'm putting it on the silk screen. Um, but what I'm doing now is that, that I'm aligning the grid because I found a way to do this very efficiently. And that is... Um, oh, by the way, what I did now is I put... I took all the pads and copy pasted it, control W to put the copy on the back side but since it was on silk screen it got on the silk screen on the back side that's why it's yellow so you see the edge connector now is white so that doesn't work so well <laughs> so but I figured that out later so you will see I will change it in a short bit we're closing to the end of the video here I put on a outer line I think it's called that. That's an edge cut anyway. So there's something silly about this program. If you press zero, the background image disappears. So you can't actually follow the image. So what I do is I, I paint it on silk screen, the outer layer or the uh, edge cut, I mean, the one I'm doing now. And then I move it to the uh, outer line layer when I'm happy with it. So then it becomes the outer line. So there you go, fix the um, issue. So thank you very much for watching. See you another time. Bye bye.